many of us here, Sunday is a full-on day of work. And I leave my home at 7pm on a Sunday evening to come to college. And Monday morning, sometimes it's as much as I can do to drag myself out of bed and downstairs for breakfast. And then before chapel, I've just come from a Greek lecture. My head is swimming with all of this knowledge that hopefully will embed itself. And then from here, I'm off to a day full of lectures. And I assume that's the same for most of us here. So when I was putting this together, I thought, you know what I really need? on a Monday morning. I need an oasis of peace and tranquility. A time to stop and catch up with God. A time of listening to him, of sitting in his presence. And then, maybe I'll be able to cope with whatever Nigel has to throw at us in the next lecture. <laughs> so let's come before God now. Lord, we ask for your peace to fall upon us. Lord, for this 20 minutes or so, will you stop our minds from racing about all the things we should have done and all the things we should have learned and help us to focus on you. Lord, refresh us and renew us for the tasks ahead this week and receive our praise and our worship this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we're going to start off by standing and singing to be in your presence. Let's stand together. <coughs>
standing as we say these responses together. The world belongs to God. The earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful. To live together in unity. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace join hands. If Christ's disciples keep silent, these stones will shout aloud. Open our lips, O oh God, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Yes, Lord, we will indeed proclaim your praise this morning. Just speak out your words of praise to God now.
scenes. Because as I was thinking about this morning, as I was thinking about what I was going to do, just got this idea of, of, of how my life is so compartmentalised. You know, there's my Spurgeon's college life, and then there's <laughs> my real life, back in Lowestoft. And it seems that very rarely the two ever come together. And so today, our first reading, our Old Testament reading, is going to be brought to you by my sons. <laughs> so the reading is Ruth chapter 3, verse 14 to 18. Apologies, huge apologies for the quality of the film. Um, I think I had the camera set on the wrong thing, but it took us so long to do it. They're right giving us my boys, I don't know where they get it from. It took us so long to film, I wasn't going to do it again. So Ruth chapter 3, verse 14 to 18, please do this. Chapter 3, verse 14 to 18. So she laid his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognised. And he said, No one must know that a woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, Bring me the shawl you are wearing, and hold it out. When she did so, he poured into it six measures of barley and placed the bundle on her, and he went back to town. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, How did it go, my daughter? Then she told her everything Boaz had done for her, and added, He gave me these six measures of barley, saying, Don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said, Wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens, for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. Our second reading, the New Testament reading, is Luke chapter 10, verse 13 to 24. I do recommend you look this up. This is read by some of my church family at Dunton Baptist Church and there are some strong Suffolk accents uh, going to come out here this morning so uh, look it up, Luke chapter 10, 13 to 24 Chapter 10, verse 13 Woe to you Chorazin, woe to you Bethsaida for if miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon they would have, been repent they would have repented long ago sitting in sackcloth and ashes but it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted up to the skies? No, you will go down to the depths. He who listens to you, listens to me. He who rejects you, rejects me. But he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. Um, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and no one knows who the Father is except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. And after introducing you to my church, let's now pray <coughs> for the church. Follow the responses on the screen. Jesus, you love the church. Forgive us when we have not loved her, when we talk badly about your bride, when we have been overcritical or cynical or despairing. Thank you that you never give up on us. Jesus, you gave yourself up for your church to make her holy. Help us to give ourselves up for her. Make us selfless in our service. 
Help us not to strive to grow your church in our own strength, but to work alongside you, knowing your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Jesus, you cleanse your church by the washing of water. Cleanse us by the washing of water. Help us to be in the world, but not of it. Forgive us when we are of the world, but not in it. Jesus, you cleanse your church by the word. Make us faithful in preaching and living out your word. May your word be the light to our feet, the truth on our lips. May we know it as living and active. Jesus, you will present her to yourself as a radiant church. We long to be that radiant church. Wash us brighter than snow. May we shine as stars in this dark world. Jesus, you make your church without wrinkle or blemish, but holy and blameless. Transform us to be the church you dream about. Finish the work you have begun in us. Give us hope for our churches and the hope of the world to come. Amen. And as we prepare to go back to the hustle and bustle of college life, I'm going to squash in a final song, sure. Um, Jesus, be the centre. Let's stand together and sing.